Our residents watched last year as the doors closed and paper machines went idle at the Verso Mill in Wisconsin Rapids in the midst of a pandemic. Verso was the largest employer in the city of Wisconsin Rapids at that time. This has caused a great deal of uncertainty for our community and city. The direct economic losses for Wisconsin Rapids are likely to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars per year that the mill remains idle. Our city needs to ensure everything that can be done will be done to facilitate the reopening of the Rapids Mill. Early on, COVID-19 caused stay-at-home orders to be issued, which lasted nearly two months. As a result, many small businesses took some of the biggest hits financially and were forced to close either temporarily or permanently. Helping support individuals, families, and businesses negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic should be a priority. In addition, our city has lost numerous retail stores and continues to sputter when it comes to attracting the industrial and commercial jobs needed to support our residents and ensure future growth. I will work with the Common Council to make sure our city stays competitive with other cities and help show current and new businesses that our city will remain a desirable place to call home. Um, I'm looking to propose uh, wiser spending of taxpayer money. I think there's a lot of waste in the city. Um, also, there's, I think there's too many ordinances that restrict people's freedoms. We need to really look at all of those and see if they're necessary or can be updated. Um, I'd also like to address the train problem. Um, trains really block the roads quite a bit on the west side and the state law is not being enforced. And I'd like to hold them more accountable. Yeah, the paper mill closure was definitely disappointing. Um, I guess there's some potential buyers looking at it and if we can get that sale done, um, hopefully we can recruit some jobs back to the area. Continuing to provide resources for displaced mill workers is critical. Programs like TAA and Rapid Response provide much needed assistance and reemployment services to workers who have lost their jobs. I commend the Wisconsin Rapids Job Center for opening its doors to aid Verso employees during the pandemic. The best way to solve the loss of revenue is to get the mills rolling again. Until then, keeping the Wisconsin Rapids Task Force engaged in negotiations with Verso and understanding what Verso's plans are moving forward is important to stay ahead of this. Accepting the reality that the Rapids Mill may remain idle for the foreseeable future is necessary. Seeking out opportunities to, that make good use of our resources and strengths, reaching out to industry experts for advice, adapting to new technologies, and taking strategic risks to address the uncertain future is required to dust ourselves off and move our city forward. Continuing to develop new and innovative community engagement methods is key. Embracing new technologies, social media, and collaborative design methods can help bring the public into conversations. The City of Wisconsin Rapids has a website that provides city-related updates and information, recorded council and committee meetings, and most recently an interactive street closure map. Keeping our residents well informed is the best way to promote citizen involvement. As an older person, you are the chosen voice of the constituents of your district. Being transparent, empathetic, and most importantly, available to the needs of the residents you represent is what defines an older person. Um, I think if we um, kind of listen to the, to the residents a little bit more, really get their opinion and, you know, try to get them to come to the meetings and uh, listen to their voice. Um, all residents of my district would be free to contact me either by phone or email and I would definitely try to listen to what they have to say and see what we can do about it. Um, I was never um, in favor of tearing down those buildings and such, and 
I guess I'd just like to sell the land and see if someone else wants to build there. That would be good for the economy and for the city. Repurposing older, underutilized buildings for new uses is environmentally sustainable and beneficial economically. Common roadblocks to building reuse are issues with zoning and building codes. Putting in place incentives for building reuse with added flexibility in these common roadblock areas brings a likelihood that existing buildings will be revamped instead of vacated. On the other end of the spectrum, dilapidated, abandoned properties can have a corrosive effect on our neighborhoods by lowering property values and imposing extra costs to the city and taxpayers. The vacated Northern Steel Castings building near the Boys and Girls Club has become a burden to the city and an eyesore to the community. Property owners need to be held responsible to maintain their properties. When the decision is made to abandon a property, owners should be held responsible to help demolish the property to a green space state. Restrictive zoning and outdated land use regulations can suppress housing supply and drive up housing costs. Zoning reforms and easing building restrictions can help meet the needs of current and future residents. Tapping into underutilized land can also increase housing options. I think there's plenty of housing in the city already and they're, they built all these new apartments all over and I just like to fill the existing houses Um, I think the main roads do have quite a bit of potholes, and I'd like to see that fixed. Uh, what they're doing now is called a cold patch, and it's really just a temporary solution that's really only meant for 24 hours, and I'd like to see a more permanent solution. Every year our city is tasked with updating our infrastructure to meet the demands of economic development and population growth. Infrastructure is the backbone of our economy. Connecting people and businesses to jobs, goods, services, and information. Access to a high quality infrastructure expands economic opportunities, improves quality of life, and boosts competitiveness. A couple large infrastructure projects come to mind when looking at the future needs of Wisconsin Rapids. The train crossing on Highway 1373 in West Grand Ave is commonly backed up with traffic due to the combination of long wait times for trains and high traffic volume. Often, the eastbound traffic on West Grand is backed up beyond 12th Ave, blocking access to multiple business entrances. Traffic on 1373 waiting to turn west on West Grand quickly brings 1373 down to one lane of flowing traffic. The Wisconsin Rapids Fire Department maintains two fire stations due in part to the potential for delays caused by train traffic associated with this train rail. For these reasons, if an underpass or overpass for this train is a possibility, it should be considered. The second project that comes to mind is the continuation of the Highway 54 bypass. The bypass would take Highway 54 south, where it intersects County Highway W, all the way to County Highway Z. From County Highway Z, 54 would continue west to the Wisconsin River, where a new bridge would be constructed, connecting Highway 54 back to its route through Port Edwards. This project would greatly reduce traffic flow on the East Riverview Expressway and 2nd Ave and help expedite Highway 54 traffic with increased speed limits and a more direct route. This bypass could also alleviate traffic on A Street South because it would provide a more direct route for Highway 1373. Sustainability Committee could help reflect community values on sustainable policy and practices on several issues relative to our community's sustainable environment, including natural resources, energy, waste, hazardous materials, and pollution. This committee could help provide information and assistance on opportunities to enhance the sustainability and resiliency of municipal operations and promote environmental justice. Uh, I'm not real familiar with the program, but I'd Definitely seeing more resident involvement in the city would be a good thing and get their voices heard.
Um, as we know, downtown got rid of all their stoplights. Uh, they put the new roundabouts in, which I don't favor anymore for sure. Uh, what we could do is time the stoplights on the expressway better. I know people have been complaining about that for years and see what we can do about that. Green and renewable energy is becoming an increasingly viable option as technology advancements provide increased efficiency and reduced material and construction costs. Our city needs to continue to support projects like the Macmillan Library solar panel installation in 2017. This project was successful on several fronts. Most impressively, the $420,000 project came at no cost to the taxpayers because of private donations and the utilization of the library endowment fund. Getting creative by finding a private partner to help fund the project and utilize tax credits helped make this project a success. Continuing to identify the potential for projects like this is key to lowering taxpayer burden and reducing the city's carbon footprint. It is important that our city continues to be a desirable home for those who want to make a good life for themselves. We need quality representation that ensures our city government always keeps the best interests of its residents in mind. My experience is working towards common goals as a journeyman carpenter for 17 years and as a project superintendent for the Bull Company, for whom I supervise multi-million dollar construction projects, including the recent Nine Dragons expansion, and as former e-board member of Carpenters Local 804 in Wisconsin Rapids have instilled in me the team player and leadership qualities that are needed to problem solve efficiently and find common ground with peers. I'm very responsible and trustworthy. Um, I can work good with other people, but I'm not gonna bend over for things that I don't agree with. And I'd just like to make everyone's voice heard and just try to get as much done as we can. Um, I've been here 15 years now. I think the uh, most important thing that I've seen over the years is um, with the mill getting smaller and then eventually with the shutdown, but even before that was just uh, a feeling of not, I don't know, I want to say hopelessness, but just not feeling positive about the community. And I think that uh, there's a lot of people that have been here a long time that might feel that way. There's a lot of new people moving in. And I think we need to really work on community spirit and getting people in the position where they feel like they can be successful here, um, everybody, and, and open doors and be able to participate in the, the bigger world um, because we can, even right here in Wisconsin Rapids. Um, so there's, there's things we can do. Um, governments aren't always designed for that, but I think it can certainly start with the people in the government that are being elected to spread some of that um, positive word and get people on board with, um, you know, seeing what we can do to start new businesses, to start that energy flowing the, to bring things around. I think two of the re uh, challenges in the near future, one would be the uh, fire engine stations need to be remodeled. Station one is on the east side and there has to be an addition placed on that uh, station, uh, two additions placed on that uh, station to accommodate sleeping, uh, sleeping accommodations, for training, uh, for space for trucks and equipment. They've expanded and it's real crowded um, to accommodate males and females and uh, ADA accommodations. And station two is what you'd call a satellite station on the west side and there there's some remodeling 
and accommodations for males and females and ADA accommodations. And it'll be over a million dollars, uh, but the proposals are still coming in. We also need a new city garage, which will cost quite a bit of money. The old one is needing repairs and outdated. Trucks and equipment are stored outside. And workstations for city employees are throughout the city, which is not efficient in use of manpower. Um, another one I, I feel is important is the uh, miles of roads that need to be repaired. We have miles of roads that need to be repaired, but we can only repair a few a year. And we have to, we're challenged with how can we prolong or keep the other roads um, in good shape. So there has to be ways of looking at patching and other ways that might be creative in um, prolonging those roads. Uh, one thing we, we passed an ordinance in which like, for example, if Water and Light repairs a section of a road, they have to uh, patch it larger than that space because when they work in that area, it's weakened. And so the patches are bigger. And if you see throughout the city patches when, they have to, when the sewers have to be replaced um, and not the road, they make the patches bigger. And that makes sense because that extends the life of that road. Um, and also, I, I've always been bothered with 8th Street and the congestion, and that, that, that problem is part of the DOT because that's a highway. But also the appearance of the stores there, it's all concrete and blacktop. And when I was part of the Mayor's Beautification Council, which doesn't exist now, we came up with proposals in which how we can encourage businesses to uh, improve their appearance at a low cost than maybe working among businesses. Um, so it's appealing because people coming to Wisconsin Rapids, that's the first thing they see. And uh, I think that's a, a long-term plan. But I don't want to forget about all the things we've done. You know, I mean, there's things that we have to do. But if you look at the accomplishments, and that, that's where I said earlier, I'm proud of them. Like the riverfront, it's beautiful. People are uh, visiting our riverfronts. It's that third place, you got the home, work, and it's a third place where people can congregate and socialize. We got our parks. We got the new aquatic center, which is gonna draw uh, visitors throughout the region and bring money to our businesses and people stay in hotels. We have new apartment complexes, three of them that are large. Um, and that was something I was always excited about because you have to have quality housing and apartments if you're gonna bring, bring in businesses because their employees have to have a place to live. And they see that. We have the brand new YMCA, which I think is beautiful and will attract people. We have the Metallico uh, recycling plant which uh, employs about 80 uh, people, um, but there are gonna be spin-offs of that plant. So it's not just the Metallico, but all of a sudden spin-offs. And that's exciting that we've done. And also there's a proposal for a new softball and hardball facility at Lincoln, um, which I think will attract tournaments and people and people stay here and spend their money here. So we have to keep in mind the things we need to do, but let's not forget and uh, let's be proud of Wisconsin Rapids and the things that we have done. Um, also, you know, when you talk about those things I just listed, last year in Wisconsin Rapids um, for construction, there was residential construction, there was $4,800,000 spent in construction in Wisconsin Rapids. And with commercial um, construction in Wisconsin Rapids, it was 30 million, 300,000. Now that is great. There's, there's the, uh, the workers are from Wisconsin Rapids in the most part. Uh, pe the, the construction, they buy products from Wisconsin Rapids businesses for the most part. And those are some of the accomplishments 
but I do do know that we need some improvements, like I said, in the fire station, in the garage, roads, etc. Thank you. Well, that's a serious concern, as we all know. Right now, I, I believe there's 80 employees working there now at some of the machines. Um, so it's not totally closed, but it's enough closed that we have layoffs. And that's a concern. We've worked with the United States Economic Development Administration, ADA, um, with an ACT grant. And that ACT grant, they gave us 100, or there is $180,000 to create a plan to have uh, someone purchase that property um, or locally or from out of state. And the plan recreate, recreates a marketing assessment. They do a marketing assessment. Next, they, they do a vision of what that uh, plant could be or mill could be. They, site, they do a site uh, redevelopment planning. So how, what specifically what they have to do to that area to make it attractive. They create a strategy of how to um, approach selling it, and they implement that strategy. And so currently we're doing that. Um, it's a challenge, and, and that's basically where we're trying the best we can. We're working with the, the company and consortiums to see if we could have a uh, successful sale of that property. Well, I'm probably going to have a common theme through a lot of these questions. Um, you know, I think a lot of people tend to want to go and seek out other businesses and, and try to bring them to the area, and certainly that helps. It's great to have Metelco come in and Nine Dragons come in, um, and you know, we can only hope for the best with the, the mill in town here. Um, but more importantly, we have a very smart, diverse group of people right here that I believe just need to have some things set in place to give them the opportunities to to seek and experiment and find their own way and create their own jobs and create jobs for other people right here in the community um, to be really looking for that and that in the end will build the revenue that we need to continue to do a good job at the city level. I think building excitement with the younger generations of, of uh, people coming up, trying to get kids to, you know, a lot are going to go away to school and to come back to this area and give them the opportunities to be here and get those folks involved and in taking pride in the city and seeing what can be done and what can be built. Um, I know it's going to be a further question uh, down the road, but the whole downtown area can be a much more inviting uh, atmosphere for younger people and get that energy flowing. We got, you know, some great restaurants and coffee places and bars that, that are here that people can walk to and, and enjoy. And I think that that would be a, a, a very important piece of the puzzle to get people to, to come back here. And I've always believed, uh, you know, being 50 years old, kind of the social media, I don't, I'm not too through, you know, too into it for the most part. Talking to people face to face is the only way I believe that you can really get to understand each other um, and really get to know what's more in people's hearts. So like we're all a lot closer than it appears at this time uh, in what we want for our families, what we want for our communities, what we want for the future. Um, and I think you only really get to know that when you talk face to face and really develop relationships and and uh, friendships in that sense. So I think that's the most important way to just get out and talk to people and, you know, build that trust. Well, first of all, I want to thank the city community media. They broadcast all of those meetings, and I know it's a lot of work, all the committee meetings and all the, the council meetings and all the other things they do in the community. But that's one way of the residents to be current on what's happening. The next thing, I, I'm, I was always concerned um, with regard to if there's a project in the, in the community in a certain area, 
we need to inform the people of that project. Um, there is an example like in my district, there was a talk about exp some expanding the hospital. It, there's no longer talk about that. But they, were, they sent out a notice for that meeting uh, to people that live with 100 feet. Well, 100 feet, it affects people that live in more than 100 feet. So I made a point to go around and talk to the residents beyond the 100 feet. Well, people were upset about that because it should be 100 feet. Well, now and then we changed the um, proposal ordinance or whatever it is to be 300 feet because why not keep people informed if it affects their neighborhood area? And I've also, whenever there was a project in my district, but actually I have to say outside my district, that they're, they're going to go over and talk to the um, residents regarding that project. I was there to hear what they have to say as, the, uh, as public works or to hear what the residents have to say uh, firsthand rather than hearing it later. So because I'm retired, I was able to do that and I think that helped because I could put myself in their shoes, but also understand the city's perspective. Um, there was an outside my district on First Street North. There was talk uh, talks over there and I've visited that. So I've done that in my district and outside my district. And that, that's one way I keep current. Um, also, I'm on the Convention and Visitors Board uh, I'm on the McMillan Library Board, and I'm on the Water and Light Commission. All of those get either may get televised or presents, but um, people seem to know I'm on one of those, and they'll talk to me about topics related to those uh, groups, but outside those groups. So I, I feel I'm pretty well known because of my involvement in that, and also, um, I'm quite visible uh, with those those areas, and I, I people call me daily with regard to issues, or I speak to them in stores issues. So I feel I keep pretty pretty close to what's the issues that my constituents have, but actually throughout the city. Well, I think there are some things that have been done, and as I've mentioned, um, like the Wheeler's, the Wheeler dealership on the west side of town. I mean, when you come into town, you see a brand new dealership. Quick Trip has a proposal to build a larger Quick Trip there behind the present Quick Trip, and that'll be appealing. We also, um, there, there are proposals or have been proposals of putting uh, apartment complexes on the west side of town, strategic, strategically placed not to disrupt neighborhoods. But to me, that's important because if you're going to create businesses on the west side of town, you have to have people that will uh, patronize those businesses. And it's a smaller population area. And so I, I think that there, if we could put um, quality um, apartment complexes that won't interrupt or disturb a neighborhood uh, on the west side of town, and there, there are proposals or have been in the past, I think they're, they're, they should be looked at and make sure they don't disturb the neighborhood. But the one thing that I've been proud of and that, that have actually existed when I started in Wisconsin Rapids eight years ago. The, the, Com the Common Council created a proposal that I uh, submitted was Wisconsin Rapids Rediscover. And what it is, is that Wisconsin Rapids is setting aside money for people who want to buy or, or purchase a, a substandard home that is really in poor condition. And if they raise that home, take the home down, and build a new home on specifications like three bedrooms, two baths, et cetera, that we have specified, then the city will, uh, will help them 
with the fin not the finance of it, but give them some money for purchasing of that property and building that new complex or uh, building. And I think that's great. It's, it's a way of, we have some old, build, old residences that need to be either torn down or there's empty lots. Maybe there's a fire and there's an empty lot sitting there for years. There's no tax benefit with that empty lot. The, the city doesn't get anything for it. But to help a builder buy that lot, build a quality home, and then it pay, uh, there's taxes on that, property taxes on that home, and in two or three years, it'll pay off the money that we gave that person to purchase it. But what's neat about this is that you get a, a empty lot in the middle of a block and you get a brand new home, guess what happens? All the other homes in the area start to improve. There's more painting, there's more quality uh, placed into their homes, and there's just pride in the neighborhood. And I think those are some, it's a subtle thing, but it's an important thing, and over time, and I actually, I got this idea, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> At Richfield, Minnesota, has done this for years, for years. And we called them, and we asked, what's the good, the bad, the ugly? And they says, it's all good, because um, they, they do five or six homes a year. It's the same type of aging home, um, types of we uh, we have in Wisconsin Rapids, and they found that the just the quality of homes, their tax base increased, and uh, we actually modeled it after Richfield, Minnesota, and uh, I think it's a great program that we have, and I wish more people would be aware of it, and that's why I'm glad I could say this now, and take advantage of it because it's it's there, and people may not know of it. I believe that, one, it's, it's tough for the city to really take a lead on this because it's not necessarily their responsibility, but to kind of build the vision and, uh, you know, get support in the community, get the right people on board that can help in, in the process of changing, like have, building that vision for the future. You know, it could be looking 50 years down the road as to what Wisconsin Rapids can be like at that time. Um, as far as I understand with the Tribune building, that was, that's a, it's a tough building to begin with to put the kind of money into it to repair it to the point where it can be usable. Um, chances are pretty good. Uh, hopefully people don't hate me for saying it, but it's probably gonna have to come down. And then you have that whole area for you know, riverfront development, um, as well as the other side of the river with the buildings that have been taken out. Personally, I have this vision and I've tried to uh, share it with other people. Um, I know that it's something that's kind of far out there, but I see whether it's Mid-State coming in and building some uh, satellite uh, facilities here to get some classes going down here. I believe that I would term it the Entrepreneurial Institute of Central Wisconsin or something along those lines to be able to bring the, the young people and old people that, older people, sorry, um, that want to, you know, ex experiment and learn and understand how to run a business and grow a business and be able to run their ideas past people and, and be able to connect them with money that can help build some businesses. It has to start small. We're not talking about dumping millions and millions of dollars into something that has to kind of take root at the grassroots level and grow up into something that is bigger and uh, and can go on and on in the future. Uh, what we see in Wisconsin Rap is now ending, started by entrepreneurs. It started by you know people that were excited and had ideas and then worked hard and you know put their put their nose to the grindstone and just kind of kept on moving forward in order to bring it all together. Uh, unfortunately, evolution kind of plays its part and things continue to change, but we have to continue to change and grow and and build our community into the next thing that we want to see it be for the future generations. I'm sure there's changes that can be made. I know we want to keep things to a certain standard and, and you know, not choose to crowd um, out. I know there's you know, there's bigger houses on the outs on the outskirts, 
but in the city, I see that there's areas that can be developed and newer, you know, more futuristic, efficient housing going in. I think there's some experiments to be had there in terms of how we can utilize uh, the lots that are in the city itself. Um, don't necessarily think we want to go with, you know, multi units, um, but I can see where the downtown area has some potential for some of those units too, especially if we are able to, to, to do some, you know, scholastic school activities, uh, university activities down in this area. Um, certainly there'd be room for some of that housing. But for families and stuff like that, there's a lot of houses in the city, in the surrounding area that probably could be um, taken down and get better housing up there and kind of figure out how things will go from there. And uh, ultimately we have to get the private entrepreneurs involved in that because again, it's a tough thing for the city to really take the lead on outside of changing some codes in order to make it a little bit more um, friendly in order to make that happen. Well, this is a little bit what I've said before. I think it's important to create quality housing in Wisconsin Rapids. In the last years, we had this Washington Apartments on Franklin Street. We had new apartments on 16th and Paper, uh, Pepper Avenue or Street. And we have uh, Arbor Terrace, the senior housing that we have over here. And it's important to have new housing because then people work here, they'll live here. Rather than working here and, move, and living in Plover, spending their money in Plover. So we, and the thing is, when you have quality housing in Wisconsin Rapids, then it helps to promote more businesses. If you're gonna create a business here, they're gonna look at what type of housing, what amenities they have in the city, the parks, the recreation, for them to attract quality employees. So housing is so important. And the other thing that people forget about, it's not this idea of just putting up uh, uh, apartments. Like for example, in Washington Apartments, their taxes last year were $19,000. In uh, Arbor Terrace, $40,000 for property taxes. And 16th and Pepper is $45,000. Now that reduces the property tax for residences because you're bringing in revenue. And there are, I think we should um, create some areas that we could put up more quality apartment housing, but you have to think of the neighborhood and listen to the neighborhood and try to come up with conditions that would accommodate both. Um, if we're going to create um, places where we can encourage um, businesses to come and we can provide that quality housing that you have, but we have to create those zones that would be appropriate for food. And it's, it's a compromise and we, we can work that out if we're thinking about the future of the city. So I, I'm excited. <laughs> That's one of the things I've been excited about um, in Wisconsin Rapids because it talks about my Wisconsin Rapids Rediscover initiative that I push and also this idea of building the city with new businesses. So thanks for that question. Well, first of all, I think the concerns I have, and I mentioned this earlier, um, are the roads. Um, we have 50-year-old uh, roads or more, and we have hundreds of we have hundreds of miles of roads, but we can only do a few miles a year, and so we have to provide we have to create uh, ways of creating those uh, dealing with those problems and accommodating that. And that's a challenge. It's really a challenge that we have. And maybe increase the amount of uh, roads that we repair or replace every year. Um, the other thing that's important um, is 8th Street uh, as, an, as part of the main drive, dra uh, drag through the, the city. Um, the street itself is in poor condition the appearance of blacktop and concrete all around. And this is where I said there was a proposal, we had a proposal, but didn't come to fruition with regard to helping those businesses 
put uh, grass and trees and uh, to make it more appealing. Um, and we could do that before A Street is is complete uh, is decided to be constructed. Uh, we have to work with the DOT, but I think you have to be proactive. Water and light where they can and where there's new subdivisions, they're putting underground um, electric lines, which will help. When you talk about infrastructure, you talk about utilities. Um, that's one of the things that they're doing. Um, and related to water and light, uh, which I'm on that commission, they're spending uh, more than $8,000 a year, a month, I mean, um, trimming trees. And that's important because we have to be proactive. We can't, when, though, when we get a storm that we get trees down, it costs more money bringing in crews, uh, time and a half, double time, and repairing that. But if we, and uh, Water and Light has been proactive in trimming trees monthly. And they've been doing that for, for the last past years. And they've increased that budget. And I think it's, it's being proactive. And that makes me feel good about any future problems we, we may have. Um, and also, when you talk about infrastructure, it goes back to think of the positive things that we have. We do have two industrial parks, um, on the, one on the east side and one on the west side. And at the airport, they put in an, a brand new hangar. It's a beautiful hangar and um, for more jets and more planes. So it's a place where you got industrial parks, you have an infrastructure, you have an airport. Um, it's a place that's just promising for future businesses. And um, I'm really pleased with that. I think we're at the right time, at the right place. But it's, take, it's taken people, the common councils, for the past years to do this. And I think we should be proud of the accomplishments that they may, have made and be aware of those rather than saying, oh, Wisconsin Rapids, <laughs> more businesses. We, we're there, we are creating businesses, and we're ready to create more. I think our city is doing a great job with our infrastructure. We are blessed to have the people working for the city and for WWLC um, that are doing a, an amazing job every year upgrading uh, the infrastructure, making sure that it's ready to go um, you know, for the future. 10 years down the road, if there is ever a plan and we did build a, you know, a, a long-term vision and then set up goals to meet it every year that can be accounted for in a sustainable budget, not something where we would take on too big of a chunk that we can't pay off in the future um, to take on other, other things. I would think 8th Street would probably be something that would want, we would want to look at in terms of how that could be more welcoming since it's the corridor that's coming in from the cities and uh, from the different developments that are happening with the golf courses in Rome and, and everything else that is happening. I think that we should find a way, and it won't be easy, it'd be quite an engineering feat, but we, again, we have some great engineers in the community and we have great workers that work in the community that could figure this out. We can do it all right here. We have the people that we need. Um, but to try to make that more welcoming, more uh, appealing, uh, I think would be a, a great thing to take on. So I was a part of that group uh, a few years ago and just getting a sense, like it can be looked at in two different ways. Are we building a, 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 a city that is sustainable in the trajectory it's taking with economics in order to continue you know functioning as a growing city um, or are we looking at sustainability in terms of like a circular economy with recycling and the environmental aspects um, i think that's something that they should kind of decide on if they're if they're going in both directions or if they're going in one direction specifically but I think either way, it's important to talk about, you know, what, what we need to make sure that we as a community are, are sustainable, that the community is, stays solvent and, uh, and does, makes the right moves in order to, to continue the growth it's doing in a responsible way. Uh, as for recycling, um, I know that it can be done. Uh, it would take 
again, uh, a great deal of like spirit of let's dive in, let's find out more about plastics, let's find out more about you know how can we use the aluminum that we're creating in the community and and uh, use that material to start new jobs. People are doing it every day, and we can do it here. Um, it just takes a concerted effort and the right people on board and be able to build those businesses to create that circular economy where we're using the materials instead of landfilling them that we've already taken out of the earth once. So they're there in abundance. Well, I have to look at what the city has done again. Um, we've created, like for example, we have uh, new carts, garbage carts and recycling carts. And those carts, as a result of the recycling cart, we put less items or poundage in landfill than we've done in, in the past. I mean, it's great and it's convenient for, this, for the residents. But also, it, it saves on health insurance and it saves on manpower because to, to collect those takes only one person rather than two or three. And uh, it's wonderful and, and it helps our budget. So it's a win-win for everything. It's less um, poundage in landfill because of the recycling now, and it's more it's cost-effective for the uh, the budget of the city. Also, the library. I'm on the library board, as I mentioned, and about I think it was probably six years ago, they put in solar panels on the roof, and it's been great. We even sold some electri electricity back to Water and Light, and a year from now, it's going to be paid off. And so for subsequent years, that the, water, the library will not have to pay for any electricity and possibly sell some back to the city or to water and light. And that's great. I mean, that's great. And that's proactive. Also, I mentioned the fire stations. When they talked about the proposal for the east and west, especially the east because there's a new addition, I brought up that I want to see solar panels and I want them, them to explore geothermal heating. I mean, if they put in solar panels on that new addition and could put in geothermal. Geothermal is where they have um, their heat is, cooked, is connected to a pump and they pump the, uh, the fluid down in the ground where it, it, it heats up in the winter and comes back up and goes through the building. So that geothermal is, is just the cost of the pump itself and, and the solar panel will run the pump. So it's, a, it's, all, it's self sustaining. And in, a, in, a, in the summer, well, the fluid can go down to the ground and where it's cooler in the summer and come back up and air condition the place. So um, I think things like and also, when I, I mentioned earlier about the garage, the city garage, when we do that, let's put in solar panels, let's put in geothermal, let's be um, look in a, in a visionary with regards to those. And even after that, look at the city hall, maybe solar panels on the roof because it's been successful at the library. So I, I think we just have to be proactive. And also, with regard to sustainability and a footprint of um, carbon monoxide, etc. But as we replace our vehicles, look at electric vehicles. Uh, so the inspectors driving around in a sedan and others. Well, when we turn those over, which we do every year, start to think of electric vehicles that will leave less of a problem with the footprint of, of carbon monoxide in, in the air. I feel I probably answered that question in the previous one uh, with regard to electric vehicles in the future as they become more efficient and uh, problems with batteries, et cetera, are taken care of. Um, also with the solar panels and geothermal. Um, I just think um, I answered those and, and I feel that we just have to be visionary as we do things and as we have to repair things. If we have to repair a roof in the city, like City Hall's roof, 
This is what we did at the library. We had to repair the roof and we didn't put solar panels in. So we thought, well, let's repair the roof first <laughs> before we put solar panels in and then have to replace it. So we put in a new roof and actually uh, it's it's 50 year roof. I mean, it's it's a long, long term roof and the membrane. And then then we put the solar panels in. Well, guess what? With those solar panels up there, not only do you save money because of the energy, but it saves the roof. The, long, the, the roof will last longer, and it's the same thing as the city hall. If, if and when we have to replace the roof, maybe we have to look then at replacing the roof, and that's the time to put in solar panels. So it's being strategic as to when things come up and being visionary to deal with those. I would say one of the biggest draws uh, and that for this community is the fact that we have a, an abundance of energy. Um, we have the infrastructure to be able to bring, you know, many businesses in and be able to set up and, and, uh, and I think that's an amazing thing and we're very lucky to, to have that, the foresight to have built it. Um, granted, it was a lot because of the mills that were around here, um, but it's here and we can use that. Um, as for saving energy, um, I know we're I'm assuming down a lot of energy to some degree because of the shutdown of the mills and and uh, and what we have lost. So I know we're good there. Uh, as for sustainability, you know, if we are doing more projects on a very low level, um, you know, there's switching out LED lights for you know for the old lights that are the LEDs being more efficient um, and smaller projects stuff like that that can do a bit to save um, energy that way and cut down on the carbon footprint. As for large scale projects, I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of talk about, um, you know, windmills and, and um, solar panels, but we're not, I mean, in, in reality, we're not geared towards solar panels yet, at least in, in Wisconsin, just due to the half a year that we barely see the sun. Um, and I know we've seen the, some of the ramifications as to what happens when you do rely on solar power and, uh, and then that happens and you don't have any backup for it. So we are, again, fortunate to have a, a very sturdy um, structure for energy to be, make sure that we can make it through the winters. And windmills, um, I'm not sure where that would play out, if that would come into play up here. Uh, it's something to be determined in the future. When I choose to do something, I give it 110%. Um, so I'm not afraid to get dirty. I'm gonna get in the trenches with everybody else that, and get the work done that we need to get done in order to progress into the future that we choose to um, walk into together. Um, I'm very persistent in a, in a very nice way um, to get things done. I have strong leadership skills uh, and uh, I have a good vision for what I think can be done. Sometimes it might be too big, but I guess I always think if I can set it up and get enough people to buy in and, and, and keep it moving forward, then it should keep going long after I'm gone. I have been an alder person for the District 3 in Wisconsin Rapids for the past eight years after retiring at principal of Howell Elementary School. My wife Priscilla and I have six children and 16 grandchildren. I am proud to have been an older person in the accomplishments the city has made during my tenure. My goals have always been to keep our city safe and welcoming for residents of all ages. Quality housing, police and fire endeavors, enforcement of city ordinances, and supporting the existing businesses, small and large, are critical to our city's future. I'm glad I could be at this interview. I, I have been a school administrator for over 30 years, working with large budgets, large number of employees, many ne and meeting the needs of children parents, has prepared me in making decisions as an older person. It takes insight and resourcefulness to meet the needs of residents while balancing the budget. 
Creating revenue streams, promoting businesses are always critical while being conservative regarding the expenditures. With your vote on Tuesday, April 6th at the Centralia Center, or in-person early voting March 23rd through April 2nd at City Hall, I will continue to focus on those initiatives that will make Wisconsin Rapids thrive for years to come. Thank you for this opportunity.